not on a mechanical hero, on a Rafaela. That's interesting. We very rarely see Keyboy on healers. We have seen him on the Rafaela, however, and also the Florent. Those are the two healer picks that we usually see from him. And at this stage, what do you think about this, Gani? Do you think, as an, you know, as an Onyx fan, Rafaela is good in the hands of Keyboy, or would you much rather have those flashy heroes? Oh. His signature on him. As an Onyx fan, that's all I can say is I trust Keyboy and I trust Yeb. Smash them. Well, we're going straight into Line of Dawn with game number three right here. Will Onyx regain the faith of the people or will Bigatron show that once again, when they do get the box here, yada yada yada. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Was it a glitch in the system? for Onik, or was it true? Can Bigatron claim another point and claim match point? Ladies and gentlemen, game three between Bigatron, Alpha, and Onik begins now. Mm. Already a difference in starting uh, positions right here. Sans going to the side lanes, picking up a bit of EXP, and Keyboy soaking up the full midway for himself, going for a more even EXP distribution aiming for potentially a huge fight in the early game. They lose out in tankiness, but as a result, they do have a lot more magic damage, ability-based damage. It could be used to gain a bit of an advantage in the earlier turtle fight. Oh, look in the oh, bottom lane. That's a purifier. Already burnt out. Not much of an effort. Super can rotating down below as well. Kyrie doing the same thing with the puncture. That's a stun over. Only to the minions to get himself to a spot, a different one. So we keep it onward, again, into the front, but there is no full commitment for either of these teams. A good juke, right, from Chibe earlier, with the smooch skill that is within the Shive's kit, within the Broly's kit, to juke away from the Thorn Rose. That was Kyrie's threat. So, again, a minute 40, it seems like here, both teams, no kills yet, but they are looking for creative plays. Speaking of creative plays, Sans on the Valentina. Very, very creative, having a few options right here. But I think he's gonna be gunning for that Primal Wrath, going for a lot of DPS right here. So, Vigatron will have to be a bit more concerned with who they target in the middle of a fight. And with the turtle spawning already, the AXP lane play! Look at that damage, man. I thought the Shred would be enough to burst Chorizo, wow. but he actually gets a good knockout strike in and just sprints away. By the way, if you guys are just tuning in, it's one to one. Onik and BTR. Zero, zero though, on the board. Onik, they do not want to give this turtle for free. If you're just tuning in, you should also know that now, Bigatron going for it. Knockout strike onto Boots with an Earth Shatter as well. Kyrie doing a good job at zoning them away right now. The final wrap from Science stolen away. Cerezo is going to be picked off. And that's Boots with a double. Oh, a beautiful Bism strike. Kendo. Super Kendo wins the red tree battle, and now he's on 1v4. It's three kills for one turtle. Onik, they understand that they will, or possibly they will lose that turtle fight, but man, double for boots. That's wow. a huge statement. The town predictions, though, is also a huge statement. Faith in Onik remains unshaken for now. But they seem to be planning for that. They know Bikish and Alpha are going to go straight for their objectives, try and abuse these tanky heroes. And they say, fine, we'll let you get through it, and we're going to go and damage you while you take it. And if you, even if you do take the turtle, we're going to trade it for three kills. And it won't be worth it then. No. It's just the slow game. Once again, for both of these teams, It comes down to just farming for Onik. We've seen how they utilize the death ball. When they have a grip in the early stages, they're usually able to capitalize. Sans engaged on, takes away the wow. Turtles' poison wow. and just recalls in the face of them using that damage reduction to stay alive. Wow, two poisons. Rarely we get to see those type of animations. But again, Onik here, a very healthy lead, it seems like, right? And Oh, wow, with the help of Boots, Lancelot now will be able to rotate faster. Bot side, though, will they commit to this? It's a 3v2 in favor of BTR. Seems like you won't see dubs. They are, they are aware of this. I can't help but feel that it's a bit dangerous, though. They're relying on movement speed. 
and they're all very squishy. So if Big John Alpha goes for a bit of a flicker play, something to force an engagement, they don't really have any solutions to cancel it out or escape unscathed. Okay, four minutes in, and it seems like Bigatron and Onik, they have, again, after the three kills, first turtle, done. They have yet to pick up another kill here. And yet, Speedal, even with Boots having three kills above Sorizo, no action yet. No more additional kills here. But, okay, Keyboy, let's see here. For the second neutral objective take. Oh, oh no. no! Super key with a big miss on that flicker. That's information, very valuable information for Onik to utilize. Astral Echo revealing three. Keyboy flashing the BTR emote. Boost jumping into Super Ken right now, but it gets caught in the onward. But that's the baptism and an Earth Shatter. Kyrie wins the Rectory battle. Kyrie now in the midst of it all. Jumps with the puncture, and that's Boots with the Abyssum Strike. Finding one. Sans jumping in with onward, but Shiva respects it with his flicker. Okay, and the wow. first structure here will fall. So the snowball that uh, after post turtle. Oh, it's so visible here, Urashi. Okay, on it immediately just goes online, knowing that they got the advantage right there. And the primal wrath on the Valentina is definitely a big problem. At Big Engine Alpha, don't really have a solution for just yet. Looking at the gold differences by UBS Gold, though, you can see that Super Sorizo is quite far behind Boots, man. Those kills have really been kind to his pockets. CW can say the same as well. Onik winning on multiple aspects, even in the roaming position right here. With, with Keyboy out earning key on the more proactive assist gathering support. Oh my lord. Ooh. A combo onto Kyrie, but it's Kyrie on a Lancelot. Just remember MSC all over again. It's Kyrie building towards the tank side of the build here. So, again, if Bigger Toronto Alpha do does catch Kyrie, he'll be sustainable enough if, again, if they, he needs it, right? Yeah, it's an impure rage, impure rage Lancelot as well, so a bit more damage in small increments, I guess. It doesn't really have the same kind of synergy with a tank hero, but Boots, gonna go aggressive on the Super Can. Seems like Vikishan Alpha are too fast though. Reacting so well, but look at Kyrie. He's waiting in that bush. Goes in for a puncture into a Thorn Rose. And then backs away. Just some poke damage. Meanwhile, down below, it's Sorizo. Just cutting the waves. Setting up for the third turtle of the game. Huh, the last turtle here. The setup here, very, very... Two words the side of Onik. And Vikishan here. No clear answer, it seems like, right? Will they contest? Is it the wife's move? I don't think so. Hmm. Carry holding on to it with Boots as well. Now jumping in on the Super oh. Can. Super Carry moving forward. The Earth Shatter comes in, but the Red Tree should be. Yes, oh. Kyrie. Primal Wrath coming down. Super Key gonna be encased on. Dovon. And even then, it's Keyboy just flickering out of the Thorn Rose or the Thorn Power Memory, rather. Much easier. Kyrie picks up the purple buff as well. Six. Oh, it's Shivan. It's Dovon. Forced to flicker out. Even in the mid lane, they're not able to find anything. It's 6 and 0 oh for Onik. It's more. <laughs> Last game, it was 6 to 1. Yes. But now it's Onik, 6 and 0. Oh, so I don't know about that. Onik really, really now punching. Or again, not holding back. Unstoppable. They're going all the way right here. And Bigatron, I can't help but feel like they made a bit of a mistake right there. The bottom wave was set up to push by Super Sorizo, so they had no urgency to really start that turtle engagement as urgently as they did. And because they did so, they were just, just lost out in the proactiveness, and they were baited by Boots, by the way. Boot go, Boots goes in, everybody tried to try and pit him down, and that's when the holy Ooh. baptism to stun everyone up. I wish we could see a replay, but maybe later on. For now, though, Onik is just outsmarting Big Kitchen Alpha in how they take these fights. They don't have tanks, keep in mind right here, but they're still coming out on top. And on the box here, remember, man, once you're behind, it gets really, really tough. They go in, collapsing on a Super Can! Oh! And a missed some strikes to the back, and Kyrie oh! with a Thor Rose. Super Keen, Primal Rat tries to survive. Kyrie picks another kill, and I heard the sound of an Onyx fan in the building. Top lane, though, Super Sorizo finds an inner. So that's at, at least there's compensation. Right, yep. they lost a huge fight bottom lane, but in the top lane, 
So Rizzo finds the turret. This is a very fresh approach to the Boxia problem, though. Most teams go for healing reduction, a lot more penetration or shred damage, like a Melissa, like a carry. But for Onik, they're just going for full-on damage and essentially abandoning their own safety and trying to rely more on how they play the fights out to try and really win it. If Vigion Alpha can find a good fight, a good flank though, it's a whole different story. A super key looks for something right here, forcing Onik to send two members top. This might be the chance for Vigatron to try and get something of huge value. And not enough time. They have no time to blitz it, right? Even though two members of Onik here Still, top side still visible. Take a look at Kyrie here. It's still technically a 60 40. Let's see what will happen. 5,000 gold lead. Kyrie looks for an this. opening. Look at it's not giving it. Earth Shatter Flicker combo right there. And a final wrap, immobilizing him as well. Kyrie, by the next kill shot, and he dies it! He dies for it though. That's a torn apart memory. Taking him down. A holy baptism connecting out the super cannon. Now the heavy crossbow. Not even. Just the normal basic attacks to take. Take Super Ken down. This is what I'm talking about. It's a 1v4 Kyrie. Still, still, Onyx finds the Lord, and even they manage to take down Super Ken. Bigatron Alpha, they're still in huge trouble. Look at the player's gold by Ube's gold, man. Kyrie is all the way up there. And despite what Super Ken was saying yesterday, look at the levels, man. It's a level 14 Lancelot. Of course, he's gonna get it. And now Onik finds yet another victim, and they're gonna absolutely capitalize here. They have waves with the Lord coming in. Now you see him, now you don't. Super key, the tank was just used as a magic trick for Onik. And now they try to defend. They are able to. They are able to clear out these waves, but it's a 5,600 gold lead that is a building for Onik. Up top, there's a cut for Sarizo. 10 to 1, 11 minutes in. And it seems like the structures now will be the target mostly for Onik, the inner in the mid. While again, sacrifice, no problem. But the top lane here, so it's a two-way push. They're looking for more, but again, it is only the base turret here with some passives to play with. They can clear out the waves quite Ooh. easily. For Onik though, it's the poke game. Sans can steal that Astral Echo, and as you saw earlier, can use that Astral Spear as well. Well, there's two things at play right now. The fact that Super Ken on this box here is so squishy, man. He almost got instantly nuked down. And look at the healing from Keyboy. <laughs> yeah. He must be so ahead because usually the healing ain't that strong, man. That is some nope. next level healing. When you're ahead on the Raphael, this is what you expect. You get Even if you are super, super low, that healing gets you up very fast. And that's a red tree committed in. Boots jumps in as well. Astral Echo, but some strike. Already committed. Turn up our memory just to poke. It does deal a bit of damage to Boots. He does have that Twilight Armor though, so even on the Dyroth, despite being a damage-dealing XP laner, he's very, very tanky. 10 to 1, 7,000 gold lead. And take a look at the gold diff here from Erythel and Brody. 2,000, Arashi. That's a, that's, a, that's a lead. That's a massive lead. You can see even more for the jungle. Kyrie, 3,000 gold ahead. Trying to put Super Ken back in his place, going for the revenge onto the steel. Oh, man. <laughs> without Red Tree, by the way, without Red Tree, he did that. Just used the Thorn Rose. Super Ken was the one who used Red Tree. It's going to be on cooldown. 15 seconds for the Lord. It's going to come up faster than his Red Tree. And Kyrie is already level 15. How long has he been level 15? Quite a while. Quite a while. I believe in the last fight, he already hit 15 already. I said already three times there. All planned. Now Onik. They're setting up for the trap here, trying to counter this macro play. Because Sorizo has always been a huge issue, but they're exposed right here. Sorizo knows they are around the area. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, the Paquito was first pick as well, but the impact is still questionable. 0-2-0 zero zero as a first pick. Questionable performance here displayed by Sorizo. Onik, they're moving on, looking for a fight. Let's see. Good zoning from Boots. Cancels the conceal as well with the skill one. So we can jump in, oh. finds it despite being two levels behind. Ah. The Earth Shatter knocks four up. Kai with a puncture, jumping into the back again, and assassinating Super Ken and getting out. She may take it low, but some strike not connecting. It is one for one. What? It is, it is a one for one. Both junglers taken out though. Onik will claim the Lord. It's off lane. Push 
for Sorizo. Oh, another structure bonus here. Sorizo cutting the mid. Huh. Finding the structure in that mid. Who? Wait, Lord stolen? Yes. Yeah, they got it. Holy Ken got it despite the level moly. difference. Ken got the Lord, and they only traded one member for it. Despite the speed that Kibo is able to give to his teammates, it's not enough. They have enough damage, though, to do to clear the Lord. But what will Bigetra Alpha do with all this space that Onik is forced to concede? So, so for reason, on this Paquito, you're seeing again why it's always so respected. It's a huge problem in the side of Onik. And now Super Key might be going for something. Boots jumps in onto Key. That's an onward and an Earth Shatter. Super Cat's waiting there. Oh, oh, wrath. oh my god, that Damage. burst! Terezo can't even handle it! He gets melted down like he's nothing! And Onik defend, not just defend, they get a good defense and even two kills! Wow. The armor shred. I don't think anyone was ready for that, man. Key thought he had several more seconds, but no. Two chains of basic attacks from the Aerithal, from CW, is enough. You can see his damage being completely augmented here by the presence of this Dyroth. And just like that, Onik has regained control. No problem. Props to Moreno, though. He's still top number one damage now, but the mid lane. Ooh. Oh, it's just a base turret here. Taken down. The first base turret. But take a look at the pressure that Onik is trying to give. They want the top lane turret as well. And it seems like for now, Biggertron will be able to clear the wave. They want everything. Everything in this space as fast as possible, but Bigatron have been able to delay the game for quite a bit through, yeah, uh, what you said earlier, Rashi, the Paquito. Cerizo always going for the Iran mode. Well, on top of the Cerizo Iran mode is also the Super Moreno clearing everything with the Astral Sphere Astral Recall mode. As you take a look at the instant replay here for that Lord fight. Super mm -hmm. K comes in, yeah. the Astral Sphere gives him that extra bit of chunk, great coordination, and Onik, despite walking through the Toros prisons, doesn't even matter. They keep going in, and they almost get Sive in that engagement as well, but he is forced to flicker out. It will be available now, and once again, it's a turtle play, and Sorizo already back at it, doing his thing. It seems like game two was truly a simulation because now 13 to 2 is, I don't want to say it's it's more normal, but throughout the regular season, based on the regular season, it seems like Onik is back. Let's see though, their job is not done as Bickertron Alpha still, they are looking for a way to find and grab a win, especially in this Wait. floor. Take a look at Sorizo. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not good for Onik. They're all backing away. They're panicking here, but only they only send Sans. One member down below. Sounds like a crucial member in these team fights. Super key with a conceal. Opening up the map, but now getting poked down quite a bit in the bottom lane. We do see the base turret falling oh. down, and he's looking for the end. Not able to do so. Just the base turret. It's a good clear by Sans. He knows better than to go for a trade. Now it's Moreno with an Astral Sphere. Not connecting, but Big Turn Alpha have delayed this Lord by another few seconds, a few minutes even. They got the Lord without any, uh, they got the base turret without the Lord. So that's a huge win for the red robots here. And Onik, they are a little bit driven here by the plans of Onik, by the plans of BTR. That macro play, that's the one thing that they have always excelled in. They're doing it again right here. They need to try and capture Sorizo, almost do so here. But until this problem is alleviated, I guess there's the benefit of Bigotron not being able to really sh re shred down this Lord as fast. So even if Sorizo can pull members away, hmm. it doesn't guarantee that Bigotron Alpha can sneak it before Onik can come back and make it a costly, costly Lord. 1825, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see here, right? It passed, Wait. they're past no the Irithel. first game. Take a look at the mid lane though. No Irithel, the Irithel's in the bottom lane. Oh. Paquito is going to be slain. He buys, or he has the immortality now, stunned up and taken down, and Picatron Alpha weren't able to find anything in that advantage for V5. Wow. A big win for Onik again. The mind games, man. It, oh, it seemed like Bigatron made a mistake, but look at how Onik were playing. Imagine you're on the perspective of Bigatron, right? Everyone jumps right at you. You assume the Aerithel is coming by. Mm -hmm. Turns out he's all the way down there. And Bigatron, they back away for nothing. That mind game has paid off exceptionally for Onik. What a force error, man. Beautifully done by Onik. Able to outsmart 
BTR, but it doesn't change. Wait. Oh, no. Brody. All the way in the bottom lane. Let's see if Onik realized this fast enough. Super Key gonna be taken very low, taken down. Now it's Super Ken versus Kyrie, and who gets it? It's Kyrie, but at the bottom lane now, Shive trying to go over the end. The oh. with a big splash of damage. Oh, there he goes. should do it. Wait. There he goes. Goes. The goes. A mysterious man with a nature, though. Oh. Two natures. Get countered. Wow. Holy moly, get wow. wrecked. Man. That was a mysterious winter truncheon from the mysterious man himself. <laughs> Gila Sans! <laughs> Onik, man, 6 into 2, 20 minutes. They got the Lord. Take a look at Chive. He will be out 30 seconds. This is the perfect window for the yellow porcupines to find that match point. So Rizzo buys the winner. Supercan now with a shield unity. That's a two man knockout. Strike! Go! CW is godlike. Game 2 was taken by BTR, and right now, wait a minute, the base is open. It was just a fluke, Onyx says. You can't do it again.